industries. Today, let us begin with the mineral-based industries. Well, the heavy industries using minerals as the basic raw materials are known as mineral-based industries. So now, let us talk about the iron and steel industry. The iron and steel industry forms the base of an infrastructure and is called the key industry. It forms the backbone for industrial development of any country. In India, it provides the basic support for the economic growth. Moving on, let us now make a brief description of major iron and steel plants of India. Firstly, Tata Iron and Steel Company, Tisco. This is the oldest iron and steel center of India. It is a private sector enterprise. Following facilities are available at this center. Firstly, high-grade hematite iron ore is available from Badampahar and now Mundi mines of Simbham in Jharkhand and Guru Mahisani mines of Mayurbanj in Orissa. These mines are located at a distance of 75 to 100 kilometers from Jamshedpur. Number two, Coal is available from Jharia and Rani Ganj coal mines located 160 to 316 kilometers from Jamshedpur. Thirdly, manganese comes from Joda mines of Kionjar district in Orissa about 50 kilometers away. Fourthly, dolomite, limestone and fire clay used as flux material are available from Sundargarh district of Orissa. Fifthly, Kolkata, located at a distance of 240 kilometers, provides port facilities and its industrialized hinterland provides market for the products. Six, sufficient water for cooling purposes is obtained from Subarnarekha River. In addition to this, the storage dam at Kharkai River also provides water. 7. Jamshedpur is well connected with Kolkata, Mumbai and Chennai by road and rail and enjoys good transport facilities. 8. Densely populated regions of Bihar and Orissa provide cheap labor. The tribal areas of Chotanagpur Plateau also supply good labor. Next, Indian Iron and Steel Company ISCO, the three plants at Kulti, Burnpur and Hirapur have been merged together and are known as Indian Iron and Steel Company. ISCO enjoys the following facilities. Firstly, iron ore is available from Guna Mines in Simbam district of Jharkhand. Some iron ore is also obtained from Mayurbanj areas of Odisha. Number two, it is used to receive coal from Jharia, but now the power from Damodar Valley Corporation is extensively used. Thirdly, dolomite and limestone are obtained from Sundargarh district of Odisha. Limestone is also available from Gangapur and Paraghat areas of Odisha. Fourthly, rail and road links connect it to Kolkata, which is just 200 kilometers away. Fifthly, cheap labor is readily available from the neighboring areas. Next, Visveswaraya Steel Plant. Well, it was established as Mysore Iron and Steel Company, MISCO, in 1923 by the erstwhile state of Mysore. This plant was brought under state control in 1962 and was renamed as Visveswaraya Iron and Steel Limited after the name of great engineer Dr. Visveswaraya. This center enjoys the following advantages. Firstly, Padravati Valley is 13 kilometers wide as a result of which enough land is available. Number two, high-grade hematite iron ore is brought from Kimangundi mines in Chikmangalur, which is just 40 kilometers away. Number three, at the time of setting up of the plant in 1923, the charcoal obtained from the forest hood was used for smelting because coal was not available. Now it uses 
hydroelectric power obtained from Saravati Power Project. Fourthly, limestone is available from Bundiguda, just 25 kilometers away. Fifthly, Shimoga and Chitradurga supply manganese. These are 50 kilometers away. Sixthly, dolomite and chromite are also available within a radius of 45 to 50 kilometers. Seventhly, it lies on the main Biru Simoga railway line and makes use of railway facilities. Next, Bilai Steel Plant. Bilai Iron and Steel Center was set up in Durg district of Chhattisgarh in 1957. It has the following geographical advantages. Firstly, it procures rich hematite iron ore from Dali Rajhara range which is 86 kilometers south of Bilai. Number two, coal is obtained from Korba and Kargali fields of Chhattisgarh. Bokaro and Jharia also supply coal. Thirdly, limestone comes from Nandini mines hardly 24 kilometers away. Fourthly, Bandara of Maharashtra and Balaghat of Madhya Pradesh supply manganese. Fifthly, the Korba thermal power station is the main source of power. Sixthly, it is connected with Kolkata Nagpur main railway line. Seventhly, Dolomite comes from Bilaspur. Eighthly, cheap labor is available from the nearby areas. Next, Rorkela Steel Plant. The Hindustan Steel Limited's plant at Rorkela is situated in the Sundargar district of Odisha. This plant has the following facilities for its successful operation. Firstly, this plant uses the iron ore obtained from Sundargarh and Kionjhar districts. These iron ore sources are located within a distance of 77 kilometers from the site of the plant. Number two, coal is obtained from Jharia coal fields and Talchar located at a distance of 169 kilometers. Thirdly, hydroelectric power is obtained from Hirakud Power Project located at a distance of 150 kilometers. Fourthly, the plant receives manganese from Barajamda, dolomite from Baradwar and limestone from Purnapani. These materials are located within a radius of 222 kilometers in Odessa. Fifthly, it is located on the main Nagpur Kolkata railway line and enjoys facilities of railways transport. Sixthly, Kolkata provides the port facilities and its hinterland serves as the market. Next, Durgapur Steel Plant. The Hindustan Steel Limited's plant is located at Durgapur in Bardhaman district of West Bengal. The following geographical factors favors its location and growth. Firstly, Iron ore comes from Bolani mines. Mayurbanj also supplies iron ore. Secondly, coal comes from Jharia and Rani Ganj. Thirdly, limestone is obtained from Bir Mitrapur in Sundargarh and manganese from Jamda mines in Hyonjhar district of Odisha. Fourthly, dolomite is supplied by Bir Mitrapur. Fifthly, hydroelectricity is available from Damodar Valley Corporation. Sixthly, plenty of water is available from Durgapur. Baragich built across Damodar River. Seventhly, the Kolkata Asansol railway line links it with other parts. Eighthly, cheap labor is readily available from the surrounding areas. Next, Bokaro Steel Plant. A new public sector company, the Bokaro Steel Limited, was formed in 1964 to erect the steel plant with the then Soviet collaboration at Bokaro near the confluence of the Bokaro and Damodar rivers in Hazaribagh district of Charkhand. The following geographical factors favors its location and growth. Firstly, it receives iron ore from 
Kiriburu mine in Kionjar district of Odessa. Number two, coal is obtained from Jharia and Bokaro coal fields. Thirdly, limestone comes from Palamau district of Jharkhand. Fourthly, hydroelectricity is obtained from Damodar Valley Corporation. And fifthly, Kolkata is just 300 kilometers from here and provides port facilities. Next, the Salem Steel Plant. The plant has been set up at Salem in the Salem district of Tamil Nadu. The plant has the advantage of rich iron ore and limestone, which is readily available in the adjoining areas. It also enjoys the facilities of cheap power, charcoal and vast market. The iron ore available here has low sulfur and phosphorus content and is suitable for producing special grade iron and steel. Next, Vijayanagar Steel Plant. This plant has been set up in Bellary district of Karnataka. This plant enjoys the following facilities. Firstly, iron ore is obtained from Hospet region located in close proximity. Secondly, coal comes from Kanha Valley in Chhattisgarh and Singarini coal fields in Andhra Pradesh. Thirdly, good quality limestone and dolomite are available at a distance of about 200 km. Fourthly, water and power requirements are met by the Tungabhadra Hydel project located at a distance of about 36 km from the plant. Next, Vishakapatnam Steel Plant. This integrated steel plant has a unique location on the seaport. In fact, it is the first shore-based steel plant in the country. The plant has the following advantages. Firstly, the coastal location facilitates import of coal and export of iron and steel. Secondly, it is well connected to coal fields of Damodar Valley in Jharkhand. Thirdly, the plant has a bright future with respect to its energy requirements. Fourthly, high quality rich iron ore deposits are available in the Bailadila area of Chhattisgarh. Fifthly, most of the requirements of limestone, dolomite and manganese are met by supplies from Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Orissa. Next, Daitara Steel Plant. A decision to set another steel plant at Daitara near Paradeep in Orissa has been taken. Initially, the plant was scheduled to be built by joint venture of British and South Korean companies, but its responsibility has been given to the Tata Group. Next, Tata Steel, Kalinganagar. Tata Steel will set up a 6 million ton plant at Kalinganagar in Orissa. Land for the project has been acquired and detailed project report has been prepared. Next, Dolby Steel Plant. A new steel plant is fast coming up at Dolby in Ratnagiri district in Maharashtra. Moving on, let us now talk about the mini steel plants. In addition to the integrated steel plants, a large number of Decentralized secondary units produce steel by using steel scrap, sponge iron as raw material, and electric arc furnace and induction furnace for processing. With capacity varying from 10,000 to 5 lakh tons, these are known as mini steel plants.